Hello, and thank you for joining me today for the destination lecture about our next stop on the cruise, which is the Seychelles Islands. As you know, we've been crossing the Indian Ocean and have left Muscat, and I'm now stopping here on the way to Cape Town. So the Seychelles are islands which often do not get much notice, but they are fairly important and well known to those who study this part of the world. So here's our route, as you've seen. And right now we are going over to here, Victoria, the capital of this island group. Okay. So the Seychelles are known, of course, for producing some tropical flowers. Vanilla is a major export. And as you can see, we have the uh, section here where the Indian Ocean comes up a little bit and the islands appear. Actually, this is kind of interesting because these are really left over from an ancient continent that split when Africa, India, Australia, all these areas broke apart. And so these small islands are with the inner islands of the Seychelles, a little bit of granite that, that still exists. And just another picture, as you can see the way continents are moving over hundreds of millions of years. So we have this little fragment left in this area. Okay. Uh, the Seychelles, under 100,000, it's the smallest African country, rather pretty flag, I think. And there's two sections. The inner islands are over here. And as you can see, they around where we're going to be, Mahi and the capital in Victoria. And then there's hundreds of smaller islands out here, atolls. If you've been in the Caribbean or the Pacific, you might have visited different atolls, small coral rings. And this, that's similar. We're not going to get to them. Uh, some of them are parks. Some of them are just places where people go diving. Uh, but they're a long way from where, where we are. Here's Mahe, not a very big island. Victoria is right up in this area. And typical outer island. Uh, just to get a sense of how these things developed, if you haven't run into this before, Darwin actually figured this out. As mountains, volcanic mountains, the ocean erode down, coral, which likes light, tends to build up. And so what you end up with is a, essentially a reef around a small island. And then as the island keeps eroding, you just have the ring as you just saw a moment ago. And of course, there's, of course, there's a huge amount of life on these things. So Seychelles, I won't spend too much time on this, but just a little background. Nobody lived here for a long time. Uh, people would pass through. The first Portuguese explorers going on to India touched on it. And as I talked about in another lecture, how <clears throat> different ways of Europeans came through and tried to conquer this area. Portugal, the Dutch, the French, the English, Dutch didn't really seem to have much to do with this, but the uh, British did stop there, looked around and left. Uh, good pirate haven, exactly again, as you see in the Caribbean with places like the Caymans or the Turks and Caicos. Uh, the French finally sent settlers in there as they were still trying to hang on to India. And a rather obscure person today named, got to be named for the whole country, but it was a slave state. It wasn't much otherwise. Uh, the British came through after the French Revolution and uh, they the French surrendered and the British said, great, stay where you are, keep doing what you're doing. And so they didn't do anything much with it. And there's still a fairly significant French influence and population on the islands. Uh, France finally gave up its claims in the, after Napoleon lost in 1814. Uh, Mauritius officially ran the place, but Again, they didn't do much with it, with it. They grew coconuts and vanilla. Uh, when slavery ended, uh, contract workers came in from India, which was very typical. We'll see that when we get to Mauritius. There's a lot of Indian diaspora across this part of the world, East Africa and other areas. And so a lot of uh, people settled in and you get a very mixed population, hence the rainbow flag. Uh, finally, the islands became a separate crown county. Again, there wasn't much happening, a little agriculture, some fishing. 
World War II, there was really no activity at all in the area. The US came in during the Cold War, built a satellite tracking station. There you go. And they opened a drone. Now they've opened a drone base, which they're not saying much about. Uh, Bermuda has also been somewhat similar with US influence. Okay, well, now you got, got an airport and uh, tourism expanded. Independence came, and then immediately there was political chaos. India got involved. And uh, finally, things settled down, and tourism became important. And offshore banking brought in money. And again, that's something they don't talk about too much. Uh, the Seychelles are stable. They've been hit by hurricanes and other bad weather. India is interested in having more influence. China's offering more influence as they're doing in much of East Africa. And as a small country, the Seychelles try to steer between the giants. You can see the way there's a lot of peaceful rivalry for influence across this part of the world. Uh, the US rented a base from the British here in Diego Garcia. The French have sequestered still some bases here off Madagascar. Uh, the British are pretty much gone, but the uh, Chinese are interested in having a base over in Pakistan, and the Indians are trying to get their influence. So the Seychelles well positioned to get assistance, help, interest from these other countries. Uh, Mahe, big city of the Seychelles, such as it is, 30,000 people, very, very easy to get around in terms of small number of things to see and they're close together. Is the Roman Catholic Cathedral, uh, Hindu shrine, is the clock tower I'll talk about in a moment, mosque, uh, a couple museums, markets, you know, and that, that's pretty much the main sites you run into. So a nice, nice view of the city from the hills surrounding it. And it's just 20 minutes from the terminal to go into town. Of course, there are taxis. There's a nice, nice cruise ship right here. A little wider view. You can see it's pretty rural when you get out of town. Okay, the clock tower. After Queen Victoria died in 1901, they were able to uh, put this up. But it took about a century before anybody got it working correctly. There were no really good clock fixers in the area and they had problems with the time. Now, just a quick reminder, uh, if you're not from the former British Empire, the parts of it, watch out, the traffic is on the left. And if you're American, Canadian, uh, European, or the mainland, uh, you, know, you have to be careful. Okay, there's, there's the cathedral, very much French influence. And the Natural History Museum. Oh, kind of fun. The National History Museum is by the clock tower, not that it's very far away, but uh, so those two you can see, just be careful which one you wanna see and make sure you're there, but enjoy both. Uh, here's the temple. Hindu temple, and of course, you're welcome to visit. Quite beautiful, I think. If you've been in India, you've see, probably seen others like this. It's very distinctive architecture. And the market. Uh, if you want to buy some of the so small souvenirs, you have to go upstairs. If you want to get vegetables, fruits, which I don't think we do, it's downstairs. Nice if you do happen to use the local money. Uh, they've had some nice designs here for the uh, local wildlife. We'll talk about the tortoise under 10 rupees in a moment. That's kind of cute though. The frog, as they know here, is actually about the size of the one shown on that coin. So that'd be a good souvenir to bring home. And out just outside of town is the National Botanical Garden. Uh, yeah, people go there, say it's beautiful, but bring bug spray and it gets hot, it's tropics, 
So protect yourself anyway, of course, with sunscreen if you're out that long. And quite lush, beautiful. I mean, we're almost on the equator here, so no surprise, there's a lot of, a lot of light, a lot of things happening. Coca de Mer, the, uh, this is the largest seed in the world. It's, it looks like a double coconut seed. And these things only grow in a couple of small islands. I'll show you in a moment off of Mahe. And also here in this preserve, government regulates them. They're all, all the seeds are known, listed. All the trees are registered, even the branches. And uh, these things would float out and appear in different places around the Indian Ocean. Many legends, a few of them got to Europe and there are all kinds of stories about how mysterious they were. Nobody knew where they came from for centuries. Uh, very, very hard to take them out of there if you could get it in your luggage. Uh, so they're expensive and only a few are released from the, where they grow. Uh, so you need, and you need a license, which is possible to get, but usually a lot of paperwork and cost to it. So I wouldn't expect to take one home. Here's where, they, here's where they actually grow. As you can see, we're here at Mark Victoria. Uh, and they're in a nature preserve over here. So a little too far to go, but you get the idea in the garden what they're like. And the other thing you can see there at the garden are the tortoises. So they actually, these are diff totally different from the Galapagos ones. These evolved here. And unfortunately, as usual with these things, they were almost all hunted to extinction. And uh, what's happened is they're, they're growing on this one island here. Again, not, not really actually where the, sea, where the uh, Coco de Mer grow too. So hopefully they'll manage all right. And you can certainly get outside town and see a lot more of the island. There are trips to do that. And some beaches, but uh, you have to allow time because it's roads are, are, can get crowded and not that large. So I'd be a little bit careful about going too far away. So that kind of gives a quick picture about the place. If you do go do any swimming, uh, be careful of the coral, but of course you don't want to touch it anyway. It's, it takes a long time to grow back and it, the coral infections are horrendous. But it is a beautiful place. So I hope you enjoy your strip here and have a lot of fun. Thank you for your time and thank you for your interest. And that's a wrap.